Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and this is another thrift flip video where I take items I thrifted and upcycle them to something that is more my style. I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Iron Orchid Designs. Y'all know I love playing with all of my IOD products and today we get to have fun with the new fall 2021 iod releases and as always all the products i use and the links to purchase them will be in the description below it's going to be a fun video let's get started on these projects i thrifted this beautiful tarnished silver piece and although i love tarnished silver i really wanted to do something to bring out all the pretty lines and details in this piece and of course we needed to add something to it this is the new IOD frames mode and you get five different frames in different sizes and different shapes to be able to use on whatever project you could come up with. And I think it goes great with the new cameo modes. You could use these on their own. There's so many different options or you could put them inside of one of the frames. Look at these cute two little, two little birds. I'm going to pretend that IOD made those just for me. We are gonna start off with the frames mode. I really love this oval one and I think it will complement the pot really well. You want to put cornstarch or something that you have on hand to keep your clay from sticking to the mold. We of course will be using air dry clay from IOD. It is definitely the best clay out there. It is so easy to work with. You simply just put it in the mold, push it down, and the molds have this micro rim so it is really easy to get the excess clay off you just simply push with your fingers and it just rolls right off and then you just turn the mold over and your clay should pop right out now in my head i thought that the center was going to be empty i do not play with these products ahead of time i wait for y'all so we could do it together so when i saw that the center was filled with clay i was like that is so pretty i love it my plan was to put a cameo mode on top of it but i love the color and texture of the iod clay so i thought that would be the perfect place to put a stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and glue my mold using Gorilla Glue onto my piece. Now I'm going to take the number six from the IOD typesetting stamp and I'm going to push it into my clay. You could do this before you attach it to the piece. I just decided to do it after. But did you know that you can use your stamps both to make an impression in the clay or you could stamp it after. I think either way would have looked good if I would have let it dry and then stamped it after, but I decided to go ahead and make an impression here. And I am obsessed. I love the way that this came out. I have six people in my family, so I have been using this number six a lot in different pieces of decor around my house. I'm going to be painting the entire piece white and then distressing back all the details. So I want my mold to try to be as close to the color as the silver as possible. The mold is already dry at this point. I let it dry overnight. I went with a gray, but I felt like that does, wasn't dark enough. So then I went back with some black. In the end, I should have just went straight black and that would have been perfect, I think. I have so many ideas running through my head to do with this IOD frame mode. Like you could let it dry and paint some pictures on the inside or you could decoupage some vintage pictures from a vintage book. That would be so cute. Or my original idea was to put some different IOD molds in the center. There's so many possibilities. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what are y'all thoughts and ideas on this mode. Once everything was dry, I just took it outside and sprayed it with chalk paint using my spray gun. I think it looks so pretty like this. So if you just wanted to recreate this and do a solid color, it looks really good. But the whole reason I painted this was to really let all the details shine. So I'm going to take a wet rag and I'm just going to start wet distressing all the details on this piece back. And like I said earlier, I think I could have went with the straight black on the mold and I think it would have blended in perfectly with the tarnished silver color. 
I had no clue I was gonna love this piece so much it turned out so pretty it's very French country but also farmhouse I feel like it could fit in many different decor styles and you would never know that that mold was not there to begin with it blends in so perfectly with the details on this piece I thrifted this set of four canisters. The bottom is solid white, perfect for an IOD embellishment, and the top is just a solid wood. These could not be more perfect for this project. This is the new IOD Traditional Pots Transfer. It comes with four sheets, so you get two sheets of black transfers, then you get a sheet of white. You're not going to be able to see it on here, but this is amazing if you have a crock or a terracotta pot or something in a darker color that you want to put white on. Then you have this beautiful blue one. So which ones do y'all think I should choose to put on this canister set? The blue or the black? Oh, it's a hard decision. When you turn it over, you can see exactly what the white ones look like. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. And I'm just warning y'all now, if you love this traditional pots transfer, first finish watching my video and then click the link in the description below and find an IOD retailer near you so you can order you some ASAP. I decided to use the blue transfers so I'm just cutting them out so I can figure out which one fits best on each size canister. And then I like to use masking tape to tape my transfer down. That way I don't have to worry about it moving. It's just securely in place. And then you want to remove that white backer. All your transfers come with a little transfer tool and then you just start rubbing it on. And as you are rubbing it, you will see the transfer start to change colors as it releases from the plastic backer and onto your piece. It is very fun to watch this happen. And when you're done, you wanna very slowly and carefully pull up your plastic. That way, if any of the transfer did not release from the plastic, you could easily put it back down, rub it, and it'll come right off. If you pull it up quickly, you might have a hard time getting it lined up correctly again. And look how amazing this turned out. Even with all this small type and detail, it's seamless. Like it looks like it's been printed on this crock. This turned out so beautiful. I cannot wait to use all the other traditional pots transfers on tons of different projects, but I think for a canister set, this transfer is a no brainer. Now I need to deal with the lids. I'm just not feeling this lighter wood. I don't have any light wood in my house. I like the darker wood. So I'm just going to lightly sand it down. I just want to get rid of the shine. I don't need to get rid of the entire finish. So I'm just using, I think 100 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna give it a light sanding. Now I'm going to apply the Waverly Antiquing Wax. I'm not going to water it down. I'm going to use it straight out the can since this wood already has a finish on it. I'm just going to brush it on and wipe it off. This antiquing wax is something that I have used all over my house. So it'll definitely tie in to the decor that I already have going on in my home. And you can see here the difference between the before and after. It just darkens it up and gives it a nice antique look. This certainly does not look like something I purchased from the thrift store. It looks like something you would buy from a very high-end store. I think it came out amazing and that's the wonderful thing about these transfers is that you can take something very simple and plain and add this transfer to it and it just brings it up about 10 levels. These came out beautiful and they will look great in my kitchen. As you can see, my house is currently under construction, but that is not going to keep me from decorating. So I wanna make a piece of art to go on the side of the kitchen cabinet right here. I want to use drop cloth to create the artwork. Drop cloth is something that I use a lot in the decor around my house. 
It needs to be long and skinny to fit on the side of the cabinet and I just tore off this sheet of paper towel and it was a perfect size that it just needs to be a little bit longer. So I'm using this as size reference just to cut down my piece of drop cloth. We're going to be using the new IOD Brocante Transfer. This one is eight pages full of cuteness. I feel like this transfer pack was definitely made for people like me that love doing smalls. There's so much floral and so much typography. How cute would this one be on a set of Crocs? This transfer definitely has lots of French country vibes. It would be great separated, used on a ton of different projects, or you could definitely use it together on one big piece. They have this set of birds that you could make one long line with, or you could use them separately as well. I feel like the possibilities are endless with this transfer. And you will definitely be seeing me use it on lots of upcoming projects on my channel. Look at this. Eight pages of amazing transfers. You know I'm going straight for the floral. I love it. This one is packed with lots of different florals. And this particular one is kind of tall and skinny, which will fit perfectly on my piece of drop cloth. And I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit to make it even a little bit longer. So at the bottom, there's some typography and some smaller floral. And I'm just going to cut that out so that way I can stack it under the piece. I'm going to tape my pieces down. That way I know they will not move. And then I'm going to remove the white backer from it. Y'all, I just tried transfers on fabric for the first time a few weeks ago in one of my videos and I am obsessed. It looks so beautiful. Look at that. It comes off so easy. I'm like so shocked. Y'all have got to try using transfers on fabric. Just think about it. You could make throw pillows you could upcycle a cute little side chair and put a transfer on the back. Oh my gosh, how adorable would that be? I need to find the perfect chair so I can try this. But so far, I've just been using it to create very unique, beautiful artwork around my house. As you can see, it comes out perfectly. Even that small little type that is on this transfer comes off onto this fabric. And then I'm just using my hand to push it down and make sure everything is attached to the fabric. Now I need to create a little frame for my artwork. I just cut out these two pieces of wood. Y'all, we pulled up the laminate flooring in our house and I kept it because this is what the back looks like. So, uh, wood's expensive right now. So I've been using this stuff for all kinds of projects around my house. So like in the previous project, I'm going to use the antiquing wax. Like I told y'all, I use this for all these little projects around my house and it just makes all these little pieces of decor look like a cohesive collection because they all have that same brown tone. So I'm just going to paint it on the wood and then I'm going to wipe it off. And then using my hot glue gun, I'm going to glue the two pieces of wood to my artwork. And then I'm just going to use a piece of jute twine. So that way this piece has a way to hang and it is done and ready to go on my cabinet. This project was so fun and so easy to make. It definitely fits into the style and look that I am going for in my home. If you have not tried the IOD transfers on fabric, you have got to try it. It's so fun, so easy, and looks amazing. I thrifted this large picnic basket for a dollar, but the top is kind of wonky and it doesn't stay on correctly. But it's a nice solid basket and I knew that I could rescue it. So I'm just going to remove the top. Luckily, it came off really easy. I was able to just pull it apart and then you use some pliers to pull out the remaining wire. 
I was hoping I could reuse the top for another project, but it's just too wonky. It would look weird since it's not straight. So I'm just gonna have to toss the top, but we are gonna make the bottom fabulous. Baskets are so much easier to paint with a spray gun or spray paint because there's so many little grooves. So I'm gonna take it outside. In my spray gun, I have Rust-Oleum chalk paint. So I'm going to coat the basket with this and then let it dry. Now I'm just going to lightly distress this basket using sandpaper and a wet towel. Then I'm going to cut out a piece of drop cloth to a size that I think would look good on the front of this basket. For this project, I'm gonna be using the IOD Fruitful Harvest Stamp. You get two pumpkins and tons of leaves and acorns and they have these little round fruits on here that are so cute and so vintage looking and I feel like that's something you can use year around and I love this little pine cone stamp I think it'd be cute as a parentheses with like a word in the middle so many options in this stamp it was hard to pick which one to use for this project but I decided to go with three fall leaves and when you're using your stamps for the first time you just want to lightly sand them and it helps the ink adhere to the stamp so I have my leaves laid out on my drop cloth exactly like I want them. Now I'm just going to pick them up and turn them over and then I'm going to apply the black IOD ink to it. IOD has lots of different color inks but I just decided for this project just a plain black <laughs> would look the best. So you're just going to ink up your stamp and then turn it over and apply it to your surface and then just lightly rub the stamps and then you're done. It's so cute. I love how the fall leaves came out. So many details in this stamp. This basket is going to be for my home and I don't want to permanently attach the drop cloth label to my basket because I want to be able to change it out for the season. So I'm going to use this foam mounting tape that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to put it around the edges and attach it to the basket. But if you wanted to permanently attach this, if you are reselling it, then I would suggest using hot glue or Gorilla Glue or something like that. If you are into a muted color palette for the holidays, then this is definitely the project for you. I love how simple this basket looks with the drop cloth label and the beautiful stamps on it. And it just looks perfect with all my little fall pumpkins and greenery in it. I love how this piece came out. I purchased this set of growing pots at the dollar store. There are six of them for $1, so definitely a great deal. And we need to use the cameo modes because I ended up not using it in that other project, and I definitely want to try out this mode. On this mode, they have four that have a floral design. So those are the ones that I'm going to use for this project. And I wasn't planning on it, but I just need to try out these birds as well and see what they look like. So we're going to put some of the birds on one of these pots too. I added cornstarch to the molds that I wanted to use and that helps keep the clay from sticking. And then you just put your clay in the mold and rub your finger right over it and all the excess clay will just come right off. And you turn the mold over and the clay should pop right out. Now I'm going to attach my molds to the pots using Gorilla Glue. I don't think I said this in the last project, but when you are doing the molds on a curved surface, you definitely either want to attach it to the surface before the mold dries or let it dry on top of that curved surface. That way when it dries and gets hard, it's the same curvature as your piece. My molds are still fresh, so I'm gonna be careful and just press very gently. That way I don't push down any of the details that are there. These molds are very small, but they are full of just very cute details that we're gonna bring out. For the little birds, I decided it needed a background. So I'm just using one of the frames from the new frame mode and I'm going to attach that to my pot and then I'm going to put the little tiny bird modes on top of it and I think this will be the perfect little French country background for these birds. Oh my gosh y'all, this is going to turn out so cute. 
Now we want to bring out all the details in this piece. So the first step is going to be applying white wax. We're just gonna apply white wax to the whole piece. You just brush it on and then simply wipe it off with a paper towel. Now to really bring out the details in the mode, we are going to apply the antiquing wax. I have a small brush and I'm going to be very careful and just get it on the mold. And it's the same thing as the white wax. You just simply brush it on and then wipe it off and it'll wipe off all the high spots and that wax will seep into all the details. And that's what really brings out all the beautiful details of this mold. You could also apply the antiquing wax first, let it dry, and then apply a white wax over the whole piece. And that's what I actually did on the little bird cup that I made. So you could kind of see the difference. If you apply the antiquing wax first and then the white wax, it's definitely a more muted look. I think both of them come out really pretty. So I just wanted to show you the difference so you could see which way you liked it best. <laughs> Y'all know I like a muted look, so I couldn't help it. I love the way the bird one came out so much. I went back over and white wax my molds again. <laughs> Whenever I'm making a collection of pots, I feel like they have to have their own little carrier or tray. So we're going to make a little tray for these pots. I have this piece of chair railing that I just took out of my house. And then I have another piece of this flooring. I'm just going to mark all my cuts and then bring it into my shop and cut down these pieces of wood. I want the molding to hang off the bottom piece a little bit, acting like a handle for the tray so you could kind of grab it underneath. So that is the plan for this. I'm gonna take my nail gun and attach this all together and then it will be ready for a paint. I'm going to be painting it in the color celery. I feel like we're just gonna lean into the French country vibes that this video is taken on but i do feel like all of these new iod releases definitely have a french country vibe i'm going to paint the tray and then once it's dry i'm just going to apply the white wax to it and that will like i said bring out the con french country vibes and it'll also tie into the little pots that we created because they also have the white wax on them These are the small little projects that I just love doing. So this mold is perfect to just add those special details to maybe something that you already have or something that you found at the thrift store that just needs a little something extra. And y'all know I am obsessed with how these birds turned out. So cute. I thrifted this basket because I love the shape of it. It was long and skinny and the wood pieces on the side are very thick. I just knew it would be perfect for a transfer. I'm gonna paint the bottom of this basket by hand with chalk paint because I don't want to get paint on the inside or the handle. I want this basket to have a two-tone look. And I did not spray it with sealer at the beginning. I should have known better with all these colors on the basket that it would have bleed through. So after my first coat, I just applied a coat of sealer and that helps take care of all the bleed through on this piece. And then I put another coat of white paint on here and did not have any issues. And then I just lightly sanded the edges of this basket and went back and sprayed another coat of sealer on here because when you are applying a transfer on top of paint, you definitely want to seal your surface first. I really wanted to use some of the typography in the brocant transfer and there was this long one that was perfect to fit on this basket. So I just placed it on the basket, used my masking tape to hold it in place, removed my white backer and just started to transfer it on. This transfer has tons of small details. So just remember that when you are doing it to just slowly pull up the plastic piece and check to make sure your entire transfer has come off before you pull the entire plastic piece off. And if it hasn't, you simply put it back down and 
just rub it with the transfer tool again. That is why I always put masking tape down. That way I can do this, I can check it, and I can put it back. Look how amazing that looks. Came out so good. That was like the perfect size for this basket. This was another very simple, easy project and just shows you how just a little bit of paint and a beautiful transfer can really transform a piece. I think this would look so pretty sitting on top of kitchen cabinets with lots of kitchen gadgets and greenery in it and that is exactly how I styled it. I hope y'all are inspired by the projects that I created today. I want to thank Iron Orchid Designs again for sponsoring this video. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite new IOD release. If you love these types of videos, thrift flips, thrift hauls, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all in the next video.